going on, guys? And welcome back to some more Majora's Mask in the last part. We got half of the stray fairies in the uh, Snowhead Temple. In the, uh, we, uh, and we, uh, got the, uh, gilded, we basically traded in our sword to get reforged. This part we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna try to see if, how much we can do of, uh, Snowhead Temple Swordless. Yeah. And if you have the gray arrow, if you have the fire arrows, you can basically, like, um, you can basically, what I'm trying to say, you can basically skip that, up uh, whole puzzle thing. And, like, uh, we're doing the pots thing the old-fashioned way, like you wouldn't link the past, because we don't even have any swords. <laughs> Yeah, I've actually never done a swordless run of, uh, Snowhead Temple. I've never done any part of the swordless. But this is Majora's Mask, a game you kind of have to plan out your three-day cycles. And much like the last couple of videos, this will be the, this will also be the case in the next part, and the next part will be the last part of this. The audio fucked up during the original recording, so I'm using, uh, in-game music. I'm making, I'm basically doing it, I'm basically doing relevant songs in relevant places, so I don't make it, you know, like, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah. I will say, though, like, um, Majora's Mask is definitely a game, you can tell, like, even though, like, um, even though, like, um, a very short amount of time running making this game. You can clearly tell they thought out this game a lot, like like scenarios and all that. So like um I feel with like a, with various content creators and all that, not to shame other content creators or like unless you have a unless you have like really valid points like about why you don't like this game. If you're gonna like if if this is like a game you're gonna just flat out nitpick it's like the easiest way for me to not like respect for me to unsubscribe from your channel because I've already slandered that uh, game grumps playthrough this multiple times in this uh, in this playthrough. I will say there are some there's some things I don't like about Majora's Mask, but um, you can tell they put effort into um into, um, basically, um, they, they did put effort with what little time they had making this game, is what I'm saying. We're actually gonna finish up this time, but we are gonna get the remaining stray fairies, and we're going to, uh, we're gonna get the remaining stray fairies. We don't have the boss key quite yet, but we don't have that much left to do in this temple. We need to, we need to get out the lens of truth here, because, uh, well, let's just say we need, uh, let's just say we need, uh, actually, I ain't get the lens of truth out just now, but, um, with interesting thing about these enemies right here is that, uh, when I was a kid, like, I would play in, like, when I first played this on an N64 cartridge, like, you know how the N64 cartridge makes kind of like a, a zit, makes kind of like a hissing sound when it's about to crash? Every time I fought one of these enemies while playing on an N64 cartridge, I always get scared the cartridge would crash. Because, like, one of the reasons I chose to play this off an EverDrive over an N64 cartridge is, like, it, this game crashing is, like, the worst thing that can happen. And it's why... Even though I have a holographic Majora's Mask card, I pretty much never use it. And I think up there there's going to be um, some, uh, there's going to be some enemies for Stray Fairs. We have to find out how we're going to fight them swordless. Okay, yeah, there are no more stray fairies in this room, but, um, yeah, so we're basically getting out the Gorm Master. I think the Gorm Master is, like, the best plot, the second best option is having your sword. Because there are stray fairies in this room. And so, this guy, uh, fortunately we have very limited options because we don't have our sword, but, uh, yeah, two hits with the Gorm Master. We got our thirteenth stray fairy, and this right there will have, contain our fourteenth stray fairy. And I know where the fifteenth one is. The, they hide the fifteenth one pretty damn well. 
Like it's definitely thrown off. It definitely threw off several uh, a first time when, it, when my first time playing through this because like you see from the sparkling it's in this room, but like they there's some there's a certain kind of catch. You need the Deku mask first off, and you need the lens of truth. Or you either you either need the lens of truth or take a giant leap of faith. Because they hide the they hide the stray fairy in one in one of these walls. I think it's like not that not down there, but uh not down there. I know they do it. It's gonna go up in a second. Wait till that oh wait, there it is. So they hide that stray fairy pretty damn well. But now we have all the stray fairies. Interestingly enough, when you get these stray fairies, you can just go straight from the temple to the uh Great Fairy Fountain, but I just prefer to do it after I beat the temple. Even though the Great Fairy upgrade will definitely uh, help on this boss that we're about to face. And I actually, hold on a second, I think I went the wrong way. I'm just getting equipped. I am pretty certain I went the wrong way. Even though, like, um, once you have the fire, yeah, I went the right way. Now, uh, once you have the fire arrows, it's actually much easier to get back up to the top floor of this temple. And I did not mean to go back down those steps again. And so make sure we get that, and, uh, yeah. We don't have the boss key, though, and this is where we're gonna need the Deku Mask. Because we're gonna need to get up to that platform, so that you still need the Deku Mask in some areas after you beat the Woodfall Temple. We're gonna fight this boss again. If he's on one of the upper platforms, I'd suggest using the arrows, and if you're, uh, if he's on a uh, normal plot, if he's down below, it's just, just using the gore mask. See, look at there. Just, I was just using the arrows. In this case, we're going to use the fire arrows. I think he actually um, takes more less hits with the gone mask. So, yeah, I think maybe one or two hits and he'll be down. I'm not sure with the fire arrows. Yeah, so I think it's two hits and he's down. So, I think the fire arrows have about have the same effect as the gone mask. And we got frozen! And we got frozen again! We got frozen again! Yeah, this fight, I think this version of the fight's a little tougher than the first time. Alright, one more hit and he's dead. He's dead! Yay! We're actually approaching the uh, night of the first day, so, uh... In this recording session, there was something I was going to get tackled on the night of the first day, except we can't exactly do that, because we're squeezing on time, so, uh... Because we still have to fight the boss. So, we'll do it the next set of three days. Yeah, so we're actually going to we're actually going to approach the boss right here. Now we have the boss key. Now I would suggest mainly having the fire arrows and the grind mask for this. We have to thaw out with the fire arrows. And notice the music change.
Unless Mechanical Monster Goat. The goat is actually my favorite boss in the whole game. Either it's either Goat or Goat or Odawa is my favorite fight in the whole game. I would say this fight, um this fight maybe can be a I don't want to contradict myself, but like this fight can be a pain if you don't have many hearts. Cause um he definitely tries to attack you every chance he gets, but it's just really fun to use the grow on mass and attack him with that. Cause that's how the game design is intended to do it. And there's mag there's none of the first day, but like um there's a there's also magic you can pick up in case you're running low and they respawn. Yeah, like when you hit him, he'll try to shock you like that. And when he goes down, that's when you um basically want to punch him. Except we didn't quite do that right there. Eventually, like, the more you hit him, the more pissed he'll get, and he'll kind of, like, throw shit at you, including bombs and, like, spikes and all that. The snow will slow you down, so try to avoid the snow at all costs. I just love using the Garmas. That's probably why I like this boss so much. And we got shot. We actually lost two hearts already. This boss, sometimes I don't always have good runs on this fight. It's probably why I'm never going to be able to speed run Majora's Mask. Because, like, that and I probably can't pull off some of the glitches they do in this game. Because they are kind of insane. He should, when he throws bombs, when he starts to throw, like, bombs and, like, drop spikes, you know, that's how you can tell he's almost dead. Except we got, wow, like that. He's gonna start, he's gonna shoot lightning at us, like, yeah. He goes all in and trying to destroy us when he, um, what am I trying to say, when he, uh, when he's almost down. We got blown up. We lost half of our health. Which is pretty punishing in this fight because um you have to re get you have to re get the rolling power. We should be almost down. Well, no, we're losing like five hearts. We, I actually, you know, even though this is post commentary, I actually did think to myself in the original recording, like if I managed to die in this, I would laugh, because I don't think I've ever died on a Majora's on a Majora's Mask boss before, at least since my very first playthrough. And yeah, we beat him. And uh, I'm actually gonna sign off the commentary and. Uh, let the oath let the oath the order cutscene play so uh see you guys next time bye